My name is Mr. Hill. I work with orthopedically impaired students. I chose this job because I have a passion for working with uh, kids with disabilities. Um, and I really enjoy the time spent because I feel like I'm making a difference in their lives, but also uh, making them feel like they're worthwhile and that they're going to succeed later in life because everybody has a natural path. And I want to help them with that to reach their goals. Some of the challenges that I face with students, um, just sometimes a lot of the challenges I see is belief in their abilities, belief in their selves, and I feel as a teacher I'm called to bring those abilities that they have out in them to make them better, uh, not only at school, but in everyday life with their family, with their friends, and what they like to do in their free time. I'm involved in a lot of things where I'm helping out not only my students that I work with in school but outside of school um, and it's just brought me a lot closer to where I have an understanding of where my students are and just a respect um, from them and they have a respect of me that I'm there to help them as just an outlet that they can go to to ask for advice not only help them learn and, and be educated but also to go somewhere to somewhere or someone for advice uh, later in life that if they have any questions, you know, I could give them guidance in that area. I've always, I've always liked helping people. Um, I have a sports background. I've always enjoyed being a coach and a teacher and a coach is essentially in my mind the same thing. If you're going to be a coach, you're essentially a teacher. Um, my niche is just helping out. I love working with kids with disabilities. Uh, one of the first kids I ever knew 
was my senior year. I used to take a kid off campus for lunch my whole senior year, and uh, I really enjoyed just being around him. So I thought, hey, this is what I want to do every day to not only make a difference for him, but for other kids who, who have a disability. My name is Joseph Beza. Uh, I was born with spinal bifida. When I was a little kid, I've been to like, to powers. And then like, I went to like, to middle school at Toronis. They treat me good. I just had one problem over there. I got bullied by some kid. Like, all my life I like, I've been having like surgeries all the time, and like I try to be brave. I get scared sometimes because it's just I get nervous a lot. What is your name? I am Montreal Well. I am 14 years old. What is your favorite color? Red. I like red. How long have you been at Hoover? Yeah. Uh, for one. Yeah, for one. You've been at Hoover for one year? Good. How do the people at Hoover treat you? Hey. Hey, good. They treat you good? What sports do you like? Basketball. I basketball. I like basketball? Yeah. I like basketball. You like to go forts? Forts. Yeah. Forts. Okay. Great. Who is your favorite teacher? Mr. Hill. I like Mr. Hill. Is it your favorite teacher? Yep. How would you describe your high school experience so far? Fine. Fine? Yeah, fine. You doing something? That's good. What do you plan on doing for a career? What do you want to be? Be in, oh, in the Army, in yeah. the country. Mm -hmm. Why do you want to be in the Army? Fight, fight a bad country. Fight for our country? in junior arts because um, it's the different, it's like a different point of view when you're working with somebody who has like um, a special need. I have to say the most rewarding thing was, or to see is like, see them like laughing and smiling, being happy without being like judged or something. I think the hardest thing was like being able to be like comfortable without like being scared that they might like swing at me or like go out of control without me knowing like what to do. I would recommend other people to join Junior Larks because you get to, it's like you get to see a different point of view than other than yourself because you don't have nothing wrong with you so therefore you can like go outside play a sport at airport or like you can go run other than like being in a wheelchair and not being able to even like write on a piece of paper without someone having to help you. I've been involved in work since sophomore year. So sophomore, junior year, senior, uh, third year, grade. I don't know, I just joined because like I felt like if I can help somebody or make someone smile by something that I did with them, that would make me feel better as a person. I love working in junior yeah. arts. I was a junior lark in high school in the 1970s. I think uh, the best experience is every time we have a meeting and I see that the junior larks on this campus are devoted to um, ending the use of the R word and advocating for people with disabilities just on a daily basis. Why I help out the kids? Um, probably because uh, Whenever I'm around people with intellectual disabilities and whenever I'm around people 
that want to be a part of people with special needs. Um, it just makes me feel joyful. It's like, it's like breathing air for me. Well, um, part of the mission of Junior Larks here at Hoover High School is we're not so much a fundraising organization to raise money. We want to raise friendships. We want to raise awareness of people with, with disabilities. And so I think um, that we all kind of help each other. And um, it's all about us all appreciating who we are on the inside and not the outside. My name is Walter Bell. I like being a part of Junior Arts. It is a, a great experience to work with some great, great kids. Um, they are really uh, in deep with, uh, with the Junior Larks and the Special Olympics program here. I get a great feeling helping the kids. It is uh, one of the best experiences to, to see a smile on their face when they find success or when they uh, accomplish a goal that they're trying to accomplish. I've been working in the uh, Special Ed Department uh, for nine years with Fresno Unified. And even on my spare time at home, I do a lot of work with special needs kids. So it is just something that uh, I've always done and have always wanted to do. I pretty much just assist them in getting to and from classes. Uh, I have been a part of the, the bowling team for a Special Olympics here. Um, and I am now currently coaching a, a team for uh, preparing them for the basketball games when we have Special Olympics here in a couple of months. I would recommend this experience for anyone that has yet to uh, partake in anything like this. Getting to know these young men and young ladies is something that I really wish that a lot of people would take time to do. You know, it is one of those things where um, they treat them really well and they treat them just like a regular kid, which is all they want to be. They, they just want to be treated just like everybody else. They don't want special treatment, they just want regular treatment just like anyone else gets to. I think what I value most is the fact that we are taking young men and young ladies who don't have the regular opportunities that other kids might have and we give them a chance to just live and to just live life as a normal human being. My name is Michelle Carmichael and I'm a special education teacher at Hoover High School. I was in junior high school and I had some friends ask me if I'd like to help people with handicaps learn how to swim because they knew I liked to swim and I said sure and when I got to the swimming pool there were a bunch of um, kids and young adults with Down syndrome that I didn't know that's what that was um, in the pool because I assumed that I'd be working with people with a physical disability because back then in the late 60s you never saw people with intellectual disabilities ever. Um, they were just hidden from public view and so I was very surprised that the people in the water had a disability and we were told by the instructor at the time to just um, get in the water and help them have fun so they wouldn't be afraid of the water. And I knew when I was done in that hour that that's what I was supposed to do for the rest of my life. The thing I like most about Special Olympics is it, um, it, it makes you feel joy. It makes you understand how important it is to be the best that you can be and you learn about camaraderie and you learn about other people and Special Olympics just makes me, it makes me breathe. It's, it's like oxygen for me. It, it makes me happy. It makes me understand joy. It makes me understand what's really important. They inspire me every day. Um, they um, have challenges every day of their lives that most of us can't even imagine. But yet, most of our Special Olympians, they look at challenges as um, just that, a challenge. It's not an obstacle to them. 
what we would consider an obstacle. They just consider oh, just a part of their life and they'll get over it and they'll move on. I love that, um, that spirit that they have. Um, every day there's something joyful to laugh about and, um, and enjoy, but I think one of my favorite Special Olympics memories is when um, we had an athlete competing and that athlete won two gold medals and a bronze medal. And his parent, when he got home, he had in his possession a gold, a silver, and a bronze. And the mother called me up and she was very, very upset. She said, somebody, somebody took my son's gold medal and exchanged it for a silver. He had two golds. And I said, can I talk to him? And he told me that, yes, he was the one that traded the gold for a silver because he just wanted one of each. Special Olympics makes me feel strong. It makes me feel powerful. Yeah. It makes me feel happy. My name is Jonathan Taylor and I go to Hoover High School. I am 18 years old. My, my disabilities are septo-optic dysplasia. That disability is where the optic nerves are not fully developed from the back of the eye to the brain, to the front of the brain. I cope with it by doing techniques, like if I get mad, I do breathing techniques. And with my vision, I just, I use a cane to get around and that's how I cope with my disability. And don't let your disabilities drag you down. Try to look at the bright side or another or find the silver lining. I was a three year old when I lost my right eye. Um, it's because uh, they were, the doctors, you don't know. Like, um, when my hair started falling out in the front, and then it looked like I got burnt when it grew back, grew back white. And I just lost my full vision the ending of last year. Um, just keep your head up. Don't let nothing get you down. Just keep moving. Moving forward. Some talk uh, motivates me. When I can go and hit the left and like some little winches. Some things to reference nowadays ain't really worth the business. I'm out here chasing millions. I ain't got time for this. And you say my name, say my name like Beyonce. They hate the fact that I go hard like Kanye. My flow's cold like bicycle. You're still a young boy riding in your bicycle. This is a rap game, homie. They playing gang rap. The fools try to use my name so they could gain fans. I keep a real. So maybe do you like 50 cent the jaw rule? Don't take my blindness for weakness, that's all I'm saying. Cause you could judge me now then be the same way. Um well, the story of how I began to lose my vision is when I was little, um I would have like these um off and on like sometimes I would my my vision would just go like just leave completely and then it'll come back after a couple days. But up until Last year, last summer, I started to lose it, lose it again. It started doing the same thing, but this time it hasn't came back. Um, I'm completely <clears throat> blind in my right eye, and I'm beginning to lose vision in my left eye. Some of the obstacles that I face because of um, my vision loss is, like when I'm in class, I can't see the board. I have to use magnifying glasses, and that's like really irritating, having to use those all the time. Um, and then how I over overcome these is like I try not to think about them too much. I have to, I just do what I have to do to get through my everyday life. Um, I play basketball, um, soccer. Anybody is going through like vision loss or like in just anything like there's people in wheelchairs and everything. You know, don't let those obstacles stop you from pursuing your dreams and don't let them stop you from. You want to do what you want to do. Like, go to college, do, do what you want to do. My name is Debbie Flowers, and I have been at Hoover. Uh, this is actually my 15th year at Hoover. Well, I was looking for a job, and I got my credential, and my friend said, 
there's an opening in Fresno, and I came from Corning, which is about five hours north of here. And she had, uh, she had told the administrators that I was looking for a job, so they called me and offered me the job, and I came down here, and I interviewed for the job, and I got it. I love Hoover. It's my favorite place. Yep, my favorite school in the district. Born with a dis with a vision impairment, I had low vision growing up, meaning that I could I could use large print books. I didn't need a cane then, but I could never see in the dark. Um, I think after I had my kids, I lost my most of my vision. So I could see my baby, my last one, I could see his face when he was born, but shortly after that I lost the rest of my vision. And so if I could have seen my kids as they grew up, that would have been really cool. Um, I think I try to teach my students what I learned from growing up with visual impairment, which is to be upfront and and um, just be yourself. And because if people know that you're visually impaired, sometimes they don't want to be friends with you because they don't know what to do. So I just tried to be myself and it worked pretty well. I actually deal with kids who are negative about their vision loss. And so part of my job is kind of to be um, an advisor to them on how to handle it. And um, <clears throat> I would just say, you know, you can't change it, you have to move on. You can't feel sorry for yourself, you have to just make the best of your life. My name is Mr. Frosto. I've been working with autism students with autism at Hoover for about seven years, but before that I uh, did some summer internships um, working with elementary school kids. One of the biggest struggles I think the students autism have is, uh, aside from social, um, I think social is the biggest piece, that's the, you know, but, um, you know, several of the students have also a learning disability that goes along with it, and so they do struggle with academics, and, uh, and in the autism inclusion program, you know, we. We, uh, we're providing as many opportunities for them to access curriculum and be part of the school classroom and be just like all of the students to access, you know, learning and, you know, and have the experience like anyone else. So they, they struggle with some academics, with behavior, and again, the communication piece. So um, that could be a struggle for them, academics and behavior, managing their own behavior. So we have adults that go in the classroom to help them so they can be able to be successful and be able to stay in the classroom. and be able to feel like any normal student at school? Um, no, they didn't have any problems with being teachers, but they always have a, a problem, they have problems with uh, some, something different. You know, they're not used to change, they're not used to new environment, they're not used to uh, new faces, they're like, they like things to be consistent and, and they like routines. So if you, uh, me being someone new in their life and they came as a freshman, you know, they tend to be resilient and they not willing to open up, but you know we eventually break those barriers or break down those uh, those walls of anxiety, and they realize that you know I'm not I'm not the enemy. I'm actually here to help you out and you know help them uh, you know feel welcome to school. My name is Giovanni Diaz. Uh, I like my I like this school because the, because I could educate uh, so I could learn stuff for our year. I like to learn geometry. My name is Heaven Lee. I came here to Hoover last year. I feel great about the school. It's, it makes me happy. Favorite subjects are math, art, and English. And um, I wanted to be an actress. My name is Elijah Howes, and I am a junior in Hoover High School. While I am technically different on a you know, neural level, I do understand that I have these things and I have to control them and I actually have managed to control that for most of my life, even if my early years were a bit awkward, so, so to say. But as I said, I have matured 
from my life and I believe I have a very good grip on what I am and and throughout every year I learn more about what I am and try and my best to understand what I am and learn more and just learn the concepts of what I am and it's so far been very interesting and I feel like that no matter what you may have as long as you have very good ideas in your head and you have very good places or things you want to pursue and you try your best at them, you will achieve them no matter what people say, no matter what's in your head, or no matter what, what your mental status is. As long as you have idea, good ideas that could possibly change this world or you know inspire others to follow your work and create even better things by you know, because you inspired them, and that is what I feel. If you ever run into a student with autism, be friendly, be open. You know, don't don't take a, a, a you know a shoulder turning away from you as an, a sign of them not wanting to talk to you. Don't take a, them not making eye contact with you. You know, a sign as a, you know a form of body language that they don't want to communicate with you. Just tend to be a little more shy and timid. But you know, they're like anyone else. They like video games. They like watching YouTube. They like social media. You know, they like watching, you know, superheroes, they like watching movies, they just have a difficult time, you know, bringing those ideas and those feelings out and sharing with them, you know. So they just need people to just be compassionate, understanding, willing to take time to be friendly with them and, you know, say hi to them, you know. Uh, I'm okay with new friends. I, I, everybody needs friends, right? My name is Keith Katron. Okay, um, when I grew up, I went to a school for the deaf in Washington. That's Washington State, not DC. They have a deaf institute there and that's where a lot of the deaf kids went. And I stayed there from age seven until I graduated high school. Okay, the reason I became a teacher, you mean a teacher here at Hoover, correct? Um, I've been working with the deaf community for many years, different types of counseling and so forth. And I teach at the college. It's a class to hearing students. I teach ASL at that college. And then Hoover had a job opening and I was interested in that. And I've worked with deaf for many years, so I thought, oh, I'll go ahead and try see what it's like for teaching hearing high school kids, and I really started to enjoy it. And I'm teaching all of the high school kids ASL. My name sign M on the forehead. Were you born with hard hearing? Hard hearing? Well, I was born hearing, and then when I was two, um, it was during Halloween, and there were firecrackers and things like that going off, and one went off really loud next to my ear, and I lost my hearing. Um, I didn't know what was going on, just all of a sudden my hearing started going and that's when then my family had me checked out and the doctor told me I was deaf. What challenges do you face? A 
Um, I think my most difficult challenge is that my family doesn't sign. So they used to just kind of make up signs for me, and so that's kind of how we tried to communicate, but it really doesn't work. Well, what I remember is that I was born being able to hear, and then um, when I was about five, I became very sick for several months, and then I went to sleep one night, and when I woke up, I was deaf. Just happened overnight from my illness. Yeah, I think it doesn't matter if you're deaf or not. I think uh, I'm proud of who I am.